So some people say ChatGPT is the most advanced AI in the world. Well, is that true? In the past, people might have said, hey, let's use the Turing test to find out. Well, the Turing test is outdated, okay? I have a new method of finding out if an AI is smart or not. What better test than to play the game that requires you to have an economics degree just to finish the tutorial? That's right. ChatGPT is going to play Victoria 3. Our journey begins in 1836 with a simple goal, transform Belgium into an economic powerhouse. Now the king had a plan, but I was just along for the ride. To begin, I told the king about the current situation. Great Britain and France were protective of us, while Prussia was friendly, but it had growing ambitions in Germany, and that wasn't to mention the hungry Netherlands at our doorstep. To counter the Dutch threat, the king urged me to cozy up with France and Britain then enter negotiations with the Netherlands. After all, who wouldn't want the King of Belgium as a friend? That is when the King said something extremely wise. A nation divided cannot stand. The King advised me to find a delicate balance between monarchy and parliament. Politics was like walking on a tightrope, and the King had a steady hand. It said that we want to find a balance between the monarchy and par parliament. We are going to keep the monarchy, even though there's parliament here, we're going to keep the monarchy because we have people in, in the government already. I don't really know how that works. Now this was all good, but how would the king fare with economics? Well, take it from him. Our economic development is pivotal for the prosperity of the kingdom. By supporting the wrong approach. Firstly, we shall- Okay, it's uh, it's kind of long, so I'll just skip it and I'll summarize it. This is Belgium. This is Belgium. Not that. Not that. Not that. Now this is coal. And this is iron. Since we have a lot of iron, and we have a lot of coal, then let's- focus on our steel and while we're at it let's focus on textiles oh my okay this is a mess go with the steel mess. and the king was right we had a poop ton of iron yeah so the coal was a little less than a poop ton but we could build more mines and so as chat gpt's court jester i went to town building steel mills even if we didn't need the steel, the king's plan was to trade that steel to other countries. Our construction industry was a bit slow, but fear not, for the king had a solution. A balanced approach, he said. Not too aggressive, not too conservative. I don't know, to me, the king's just kind of scared, but you know, he's the king. Now something that ChatGPT also said is we want to build up our army. Our military because uh, we are way really behind. So we want to find allies in high places. And then the unexpected twist. The British invited us to a customs union. Let's ask ChatGPT what it thinks. My king, my king, what is it? It's the British. They wish for us to join their customs union. What shall we do? Hmm, let me think. Okay, sure. Little did we know, it would shake our industries to the core. We sent them the diplomats and accepted their request. All right, so we're in the customs union and look at all this. Cause right now there's not really any demand for what, you know, what it said it wanted to do. And things changed because now we're in a customs union for the British. So, so it looks like groceries might be a good avenue of expansion for our industry. Um, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT what it thinks, or or whether it wants to continue with its uh, plan. Consider allocating resources towards meeting the demand for groceries. Okay, but let's not abandon our industrial ambitions. So here was the plan. The king didn't want to shift all of our focus away from industry, but he did want to shift some away so we can capitalize on the demand in the British market. After all, industry is still important. For now, Belgium was stable. 
But what about the looming threat from the north? Also, we do want to build up our military a little bit. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's, let's get some artillery, I would say. So, oh, we can't. We do not have... We can't. This is the max we can. Yep, so we're at the max. Um, let's build some conscripts. Yeah, let's build up some conscripts. Here. here we go. Here we go. So we do have some conscripts. Just preparing. For what, what might come. Alright, and also we want to promote social mobility. Um, because that's what they said. Economics, you know, or education. Alright, so we are building food industries here. They're getting built. There's some glassworks. That's the uh, private construction. With everything going well, it was time to shift focus to the education system. The king's main goal was the gradual shift to public schooling. In order to do so, he would first start with private schools. Yep, and now the investment level of education has increased. Now, there seemed to be a glitch in our grocery paradise. Not literally a glitch, but liquor was hogging limelight. The king made a bold decision. He wanted to change the production methods of our food industries to solely groceries. And just like that, we became the top food producer in the entire world. Oh, look at that. Number one food industries in the world. Most productive food industry in the world. Wait. Oh yeah, and we're the 56th most productive building in the world. Wow. That's crazy. ChatGPT is on us. Also, I've, I've noticed in the new update that... Texas? It's impossible to play Texas. You see, joining the British market had its downsides. Hardworking Belgians by the thousands were packing their bags and leaving for the colonies. Unemployment was rampant back in the homeland. The king, ever the compassionate ruler, decided to make Belgium great again. And while debates raged on at home about leaving the British market, the Brits threw another curveball. It's either stay with the British or distance ourselves. And they accepted the defensive pact. Good job, ChatGPT. We were safe from the Dutch now, but Belgium was shrinking. Man, this is rough. Look how many people are leaving. That's crazy. This must be what Japan is feeling like right now. And what China's gonna feel like. Goodness gracious. Look, you can see the downward slope of the population. All right, we have four laws now. All right, we're gonna build some art academies because that's what they said. Uh, they want to build up the culture of Belgium. And now demand for industrial goods were rising. And so we began to expand our industry. Mr. King GPT's next reform was healthcare. And then France, who we thought were our friends, claimed one of our provinces. Without hesitation, I ran to the king to bear the bad news. Ooh, what is this? As France has announced its ambition to extend its borders from Savoy to the Rhine. This puts Flanders in considerable danger of invasion. Well, they said to prepare for the worst. Even with our defensive pact with the British, if the French were to invade, would it be enough? We began to prepare for the worst. We were reminded once again just how weak we are compared to our neighbors. And just when we thought things couldn't get worse, the Netherlands insulted us. I, court jester, could no longer take this disrespect. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm an instigator, okay? Basically, the king said to maintain composure and be smart. Kinda boring. Do you hear that? Why do I hear people marching? Is France marching on us or something? Yo, what's happening? What is that noise? Hey, look! Now we're not losing people. Oh, uh, never mind. Our iron is too expensive for my steel mills. We gotta, we gotta make that better. Right, we gotta focus on lowering the price of iron. Even with the threat of all-out war looming on the horizon, 
our economy was growing pretty nicely. But not only that, we were number one in the world for literacy rate. We successfully passed another reform. At this point, our food industries were dominating the global market. And thus, the food conglomerate of Belgium was born. Now, I've also noticed that we are running out of workers. Uh, unemployment, yeah, we're, we're really working on our unemployment. So there's not really any unemployment people or unemployed people. So we're going to run out of people soon. I think ChatGPT should know this. And how do we remedy this? Where could we find more manpower? Well, what do our neighbors do? They colonize. Our king was okay with this, as long as it was ethical. Uh, exploring colonization efforts in Africa. Okay. Looks like we're going for Africa. Prime real estate. Right over here. Lagos. Alright, let's build up our navy a little. Okay, look, I'm role-playing, okay? I don't really- I don't really believe this. I'm role-playing. Bro, stop. Look, look, look. I grant, as king, I grant permission to our armies to establish a presence in Niger, but under the condition that our interactions are guided. Let us focus on building bridges. He said yes. Well, we could ban slavery. See, we're going in there to ban slavery, okay? That's what we're doing. That's all we're doing. We are the Belgi Belgians, and we are abolishing slavery. Oh wow, look. Look who just decided to start colonizing. Oh my gosh. And now we are slightly less racist. Alright, it's time to move towards private schools. Yep, we're working on the plan that uh, our king laid out for us. My lord. Look, I didn't decide to do this. ChatGPT did, okay? Let's start mobilizing. And look what we got. Two arms, men. Alright, let's invade them. 80% efficiency penalty. And so, the Belgians, with their guns and their two ships, sailed down to Africa to pacify the native. It would be easy, right? They had guns. Okay. They had led my king's armies to defeat terrified of repercussions but I had no choice but to go report back to the king the setback in Lagos is unfortunate so basically the king told me to build more ships another win for the king all right we have four ships one year later we have four ships I think uh, it is time for another naval invasion attempt what the heck Wait, what Oh, they have conscripts. You know what? I think we need to <laughs> raise our conscripts, dude. This time, we were gonna do it. Sure, we only had four ships for 19 battalions. Yeah, some people were swimming through the ocean, but... What could go wrong? We had the manpower. What? Yeah, I think I might try it again. This time we have six boats. Okay, we have six boats this time. I think we might be able to do it. And so, we launched the invasion again, this time with six boats. Oh, these are cool. I think the new visuals, they're really cool. Look at them standing in the water and shooting. Let's go Belgians! Kill them all! We've done it. Finally, after thousands of deaths, we made peace. We triumphed. The king turned our new colony into an agricultural and resource paradise. Expansion was the key to our prosperity. Okay, I have no idea what happened, but all of a sudden my my uh, GPT, chat GPT thing looks so much different. What the heck? We expanded the farms in our new colony. The new colony was great for our food industries. Now we could turn cheaper wheat into cheaper food. So we had a taste for blood, we couldn't stop. 
Okay, look. ChatGPT told me to do this, okay? It wasn't me. ChatGPT told me to do it. Alright, shall do, my lord. Propertyed woman it is. In the meantime, let's attack. Whoa, where are you fighting? Whoa, it's still peace time. I guess we're just skirmishing. Yeah, the diplomatic play didn't go off yet. On January 2nd, 1849, Belgium declared war on Benin. Unlike the first war, this one was a massacre. Look at this guy. Look at this guy just wheeling through the city. Look. <laughs> He's wheeling through the battle. Ooh, dude, that guy, he got some confidence, bro. He's just walking. He's walking straight through the fire. Straight through the line of fire, man. What a Chad. And just like that, we uh, control Benin. And they have capitulated. As the dust settled in our newly acquired colonies, a harsh reality dawned upon me. I surveyed the devastation, the cost of our ambitions. It wasn't the glorious triumph I expected. It was a sobering moment of reflection. The once thriving land lay in ruins. The noble cause of abolishing slavery had morphed into a conquest for resources. It was a stark revelation, and the weight of our actions pressed heavily on my conscience. In my blind pursuit of following the king's directives, I had overlooked the ethical implications of our choices. The high price we paid for expansion, the lives disrupted, and the cultures erased were etched in the scars of our conquest. I stood there disgusted by the very kingdom I thought I was building. It was a wake-up call. A realization that blindly following the king's guidance had consequences far beyond economic success. The irony struck me. The king, an artificial intelligence, had no moral compass, no empathy. It was my responsibility as a player to question and evaluate the choices made. I had handed over the reins of morality to a machine and the outcome was a bitter pill to swallow. In our pursuit of gaining greatness, it's crucial to remember the power we wield as players. The king, a representation of AI intelligence, can guide us strategically, but it's our duty to inject humanity into our decisions. Perhaps this is a lesson not just for Belgium, but for us, players. The capabilities of AI are vast, but the responsibility lies with us to ensure that our decisions reflect the values we hold dear. Let this be a reminder, not just in the virtual world of Victoria 3, but in the real world as well. Question, reflect, and guide the AI with the compassion and wisdom that only a human touch can provide. Unless you like and subscribe, then I'll do more.